We all know that in 2019, Mazda came out with an update for the MX-5 Miata known as the ND2. Now in this video, I'm going to share with you if you should go for the brand new ND2 or the earlier ND1. Cue that intro! Well, as you can see everyone, I am here safe in my living room. I am not on location because we are in the middle of a stay-at-home order here in Manila, Philippines. So I hope that all of you, my viewers, are also staying safe, staying healthy, and enjoying my YouTube videos. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button as well. And I promise you guys that even with this uh, stay-at-home order, we will still be discussing a lot of relevant car topics right here on the channel. Channel. and when the time comes that we're now allowed to go out then I will keep bringing those car reviews and those road trip videos just for you now on to our main topic now the biggest thing going for the ND2 is an increase in power all 26 horsepower in total well if you think about it that might not seem like much but for a car that weighs in at around 2300 pounds you would definitely feel that 26 horsepower gain with your butt dyno. Now the red line of the ND2 has been bumped up to 7500 RPM, which is quite a good size bump from the ND1 6800 RPM. Now aside from the power output increase, the ND2 also gets a telescopic steering wheel, which is a big plus for taller drivers. Now, I'm not really a tall person, I'm just five foot six, so this doesn't really bother me as much, but by giving the ND2 a telescopic steering wheel, it opened up the driving experience to a lot more uh, drivers, especially the taller drivers out there. Then, of course, you have some small tweaks that can be found as well in the ND2, such as the standard rear view camera, which looks like a pimple in the middle of the rear bumper, to be perfectly honest. And you've got some redesigned cup holders and other stuff like that. Now, all of these features may seem like a big uh, plus for the ND2, but all of these features come at a cost. You see, a uh, basic, no frills, uh, base model ND2 with a soft top in a manual transmission configuration here in the Philippines would now set you back around 1,980,000 pesos. So that's how much it is in US dollars and that's a pretty big amount of money. Uh, in comparison, back in uh, late 2017, when I got my Scarlet, which is a 2018 uh, MX-5 ND1 soft top, I only paid around 1.7 million pesos for her brand new. So as you can see guys, inflation can be a bitch. Now a second uh, possible con that goes for the ND2 is its relative lack of aftermarket support in the industry today. You see the ND2 uh, with the increase in power also now comes with a different kind of uh, transmission. It now uses a dual mass flywheel instead of uh, the, the single mass flywheel that could be found in the ND1. So with this in terms of uh, engine tuning and engine modifications, there are a lot less options at least at this time, at the time of this recording for the ND2 than the ND1. And lastly, the biggest elephant in the room, if you buy a brand new ND2, well, you will take the full hit of depreciation. We all know that once you buy a brand new car, the moment you get out of the lot, your car immediately loses around 20% of its value. And being the owner of this brand new car, you would take the full hit of that depreciation. So that's also something that you have to consider. Now, when it comes to the ND1, which uh, was on sale from 2015 to 2018, it also has some pros that go with it. Uh, most notably, the top benefit that you would get with a pre-owned ND1 is, of course, the price. Whereas if you had to pony up almost 2 million pesos for a brand new ND2, uh, most examples of ND1s 
right now being sold here in the Philippines can be had in the price range of around 1.2 million to 1.5 million depending on the condition, the model, and all that. Now since Miatas are typically low uh, volume vehicles, uh, the depreciation isn't really that much in terms of, well, comparing it to other more mainstream cars. Uh, in fact, uh, NAs, first generation NAs in the Philippines now go for around 300,000 pesos to around 600,000 pesos for really nice pristine models. And those are the NAs. And the NCs go for around 800,000 to 1 million pesos still at this time. So your NDs, even the earliest NDs that came in, the ND ones that came into the Philippines, would still cost around 1.2 million at its lowest point. Now, in terms of power, we all know that the ND1 is down by 26 horsepower against the ND2. But if you think about it, a simple ECU tune and maybe a set of headers could bump up the power to the same level as the ND2 without really sacrificing uh, reliability and street performance now at the same time the 6800 rpm can go up to as much as 7200 rpm when you do that ecu tune and this uh, ecu tune uh, will probably just set you back around 25 to 30 thousand pesos so it's not really an expensive um, modification then of course if you're after more power, if you know a simple ECU tune and headers is not enough for you, there's a ton of aftermarket engine options for the ND1. You can go supercharger, you can go turbochargers. We even have some ND1s that have been completely engine swapped. And if you're going to go through this major modification uh, route, it would make perfect sense for you to buy the ND1 at its pre-owned depreciated price levels rather than ponying, ponying up for a brand new ND2 and just changing it all <laughs> like that. It's like a complete waste, right? Now when it comes to its cons, uh, when you get an ND1, of course at this time you'd probably be out of warranty or almost out of your uh, dealer warranty so if there would be some issues some problems with your car then it's going to be uh, your own personal fix also there is that uh, pesky transmission issue that can be found in a uh, few nd ones especially the earlier uh, nd ones that came with the earlier transmissions you see there is an issue wherein uh, sometimes it would be difficult to put your uh, ND1 into gear. Sometimes it happens in the second gear or in the third gear. So there were some issues like this, but I, uh, Mazda has updated the transmission from that time. And in fact, my Scarlett, which is a 2018 model, is already on the fourth version of the transmission. And so far, even after more than two years of ownership, I've not had any transmission issues with my ND1 MX-5. Lastly, there's another issue for the ND1s, and that would be the soft top itself. Now, there are a few ND1s wherein the soft top would be rubbing on the roll hoop of your, uh, of your Miata and that would mean that your soft top would start fraying and there would be some damage and if you're out of warranty it might not be replaced by your local mazda dealer so that might be an issue as well so these are some of the things that you just have to watch out for when you are in the market for a pre-owned ND1. So, which fourth generation MX-5 Miata should you get? Should you go for the pre-owned ND1 or should you go for the brand new ND2? Well, let's put it this way. If you are the type of Miata owner who would like to keep your car stock, and you just want to enjoy that MX-5 Miata driving experience, and you're gonna keep your car for many, many years, and you can afford it well you may as well pony up for the brand new mx5 miata nd2 why because well you get more power out of the box that's number one you get a nice telescoping steering wheel which is great for taller drivers and you're going to keep it stock anyway so you don't really care about the lack of or the relative lack of aftermarket options now when it comes to depreciation you don't really give a heck out of it because, well, you're the type of person who would probably keep the car for many years. So if the MX-5 is a keeper for you, then 
who cares about depreciation anyway? You'd get a lot of smiles per hour with your car throughout those years of ownership. So if you fit all of those uh, criteria, then the ND2 is for you. But if budget is a bit tight or you want to modify your car to your liking, you want to you know, snap on a turbo or a supercharger on it, you want to tune that ECU, you want to you wanna personalize it to your liking, and the non-telescoping steering wheel doesn't even bother you as much because, well, you're probably the same height as I am, so it doesn't really bother you that you don't have a telescoping steering wheel. And well, if this is the case, then buying a good condition pre-owned ND1 may just be the right path for you. Just make sure that you check those rub marks on the roll hoops on the soft top. Just make sure the soft top is in good condition and just make sure that you know the transmission history of your ND1. Uh, if you could get like an ND1 with a version 3 or a version 4 transmission already which uh, came out in like the late ND1s like what I have my Scarlet at 2000, model year 2018 or model year 2017 uh, then you would have a more peace of mind in terms of the reliability of your transmission or you may as well just get an automatic MX-5 because even the automatic ND1s never had any issues with transmission grinding. But where's the fun in getting an automatic MX-5 anyway? It should always be a manual. <laughs> so in the end guys, basically the decision is yours. But either way, you can't really go wrong when buying a fourth generation MX-5 Miata, whether it's a soft top or an RF or an ND1 or an ND2. Because this car wow will just give you that pure driving experience and will definitely put a smile on your face thank you again guys for watching my videos i will see you again in another video bye bye uh the nd to receive additional 26 uh uh blah, blah, blah. okay cut <laughs> take two action